as usual, every quarter we meet, we have the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank and the Financial Services Committee. And we always happy to communicate the outcomes of this uh, committee through the, the media. Starting with the Financial Stability Committee, uh, the Financial Stability Committee normally looks at the performance of the financial sector for the past quarter. So the numbers we have here are not very much different from the numbers we gave here in uh, the monetary policy and financial stability statement. So I want to read very much on that. Uh, we will be giving you the press release that uh, gives you the numbers. Uh, but briefly, it's uh, as we have indicated in February, uh, the financial sector of our economy remains sound, strong, and uh, uh, continues to grow, uh, and the soundness is normally uh, based on the performance of the, uh, of the sector in terms of its uh, capital base. Uh, as we indicated that time, uh, the financial institutions are uh, well capitalized. Uh, when we look at the uh, when we look at the banking sector. The ratio stood at 21.8 percent. That's what we call the capital request ratio, compared to a minimum of 15 percent. And the microfinance institutions were at 35.2 uh, percent. The insurance sector, we, as we had earlier said, had some issues last year, but we end there on a positive note with the, most of the uh, insurance sector uh, uh, recapitalized. The other point to note here is the growth of the assets of the financial institutions. The banking industry, we saw the assets growing by 11.5%. That is for 2016. So the numbers I'm giving you here are for 2016. And the liquidity remains high. Uh, the example is with the banking industry, where we have a liquidity ratio of 42.5%. Compared to 20%, uh, the minimum uh, that is required, or the pre the benchmark we give uh, from the prudential side. Uh, the other indicator that that uh, we follow is on the health of the portfolio of the uh, financial sector. That is the performance of the of the loans. Uh, again, as we indicated last time. We see deterioration in the quality of the loans of the banking industry, uh, non performing loans increasing from 6.2% uh, in 2015 to 7.5% December uh, 2016. I think we had indicated uh, there were uh, different factors behind this. One was cleaning up of books of some, uh, of some banks and uh, maybe the performance of the economy in general, as, as you have from the Institute of Statistics, uh, had also uh, some note playing this deterioration. And we saw the same trend with the microfinance institutions. And what we are doing is to work with the, the financial institution to bring them back to our medium term uh, benchmark of 5%. Uh, again, what we, we noticed that is uh, positive is on the profitability of the financial sector. At least we see the banking industry, uh, the profit before tax growing to 60 billion from 57 billion achieved in, uh, in 2015. So as I said, most of these numbers we have given them to you in February. So I just summarize the outcomes of the Financial Stability Committee as that, but I think the summary of it all is that the committee is happy that the financial sector is sound and stable and continues to grow. Of course, express concern on the quality of the uh, loan portfolio, and therefore we uh, uh, really to do more to, to work with the financial institution to, to ensure that this trend of uh, the non-performing loans reverses, and we expect to see this going to our mid-term uh, benchmark of five percent. Now, the Monetary Policy Committee normally looks at the, the monetary policy and how that impacts, or, uh, impacts on the economy uh, and the performance of the economy in general, how we do uh, a monetary policy in the context of the existing economic conditions. 
And as always, we look at the context in which our economy is, uh, uh, is in. So that is the global economy, the performance of the global economy. I'm sure you've seen that the IMF uh, World Economic Outlook uh, released in January uh, revised or shows positive uh, trends in the global economy. Uh, we're all expected to grow by 3.4% from 3.1%. In 2017, compared to 3.1 realized in 2016. The advanced economies, uh, we see them also improving to 1.9% from 1.6% uh, achieved last year. And coming closer to where we are is the Sub Saharan Africa. The economies of Sub Saharan Africa on average expected to grow at 2.8% uh, compared to. 1.6 we achieved last year. Uh, then when we look at the inflation, of course, which is our main objective as a central bank, we look at the global inflation. Uh, interesting, one, one would say it's improving uh, because the, the, the developed countries have been trying to push it upwards uh, because they've been in almost a deflationary uh, situation. Therefore, overall, it's expected to increase from 0.7 percent achieved in 2016 to 1.7 percent this year. Uh, and as you've heard, uh, the U.S. Has, has started sort of tightening their monetary uh, stance, uh, though the other big economies remain uh, heavily accommodative uh, because they, their inflations are still very low. And then uh, on the Sub-Saharan Africa, of course, because of the challenges we had with commodity prices, and so inflation remains uh, remains high. It's expected to to increase to 11.3 percent. No, in fact, uh, it increased to 11.3 percent in uh, in 16 compared to 7 we had in 15, and it's expected to slightly ease to 10.8 uh, percent. Coming closer to the East African community, uh, we see inflation pressures across the region. Uh, uh, we saw uh, inflation at 9% uh, in Kenya, 6.7% in, uh, in Uganda, that is in February, and uh, it stands at 20.7% in Burundi and 5.5% in uh, in Tanzania, and all these we see increased uh, inflationary pressures across across the region, mainly linked to uh, food challenges or uh, the drought that we've seen almost uh, across the region. So, having given the context of where we are operating as as a country, as an economy, coming back to the Rwandan uh, economy itself, we. Just repeat what you are given by the Institute of Statistics that our economy grew by 5.9 percent last year, and uh, uh, we see this growth continuing in this year. Uh, at least the what we call uh, frequent economic uh, indicators uh, show that the economy in the first two months. Uh, that's just on the few that we follow, it's not the overall, so at least it's just an indication that we continue to see positive developments. So we see what we call the composite index of economic activities growing by 5.8 percent, and the turnover is growing by 15.9 uh, percent. These are uh, quick economic numbers we can see that give an indication of the economy continuing to, uh, to perform positively. Uh, and when we look at international trade, I think we, we see good performance in general in the first two months as we, uh, again, gave you uh, in February, uh, the, the performance of the external sector in 2016 was really positive. We, see, we saw deficit reducing by 5.9% in 2016. Uh, and as a result of that, we, I mean, also linked to that, we, we see continued uh, good performance in the first two months of 2017. Uh, the, the trade deficit is reducing by 25.2%. Uh, the deficit reducing from 296 
million to 221 uh, million in the first two months. This is linked to uh, reduced uh, formal imports by 11.9%, while exports increased by 39.1%. That is the first two months. Uh, so it's uh, still early, but it's a positive indication. And where we see for the first two months our exports covered 32.7% uh, of our imports, which is much, much higher than the 25, uh, I think we had last year 20, 25% coverage. In fact, it was 24.2% uh, last year. So linked to this uh, improvement in, in balance of payments, as you, again you see on the market uh, that we announce every day, we see less pressures on the, on the uh, far and the exchange. Uh, the, the rates so far, uh, we see depreciation of 0.7% up to 24th March uh, as the depreciation rate compared to 2.7% we had reached last year. And based on these positive developments and the less pressures we see, uh, we expect this year the run and front to depreciate at average or not more than 4% by the end of this year, 2017. Looking at inflation, as I said, our main uh, objective was the central bank. Again, as you've uh, received the different reports from the Institute of Statistics, there has been inflationary pressures for quite some time now, uh, where we saw inflation increasing from 7.3% in December 16 to 8.1% in February. And this was mainly due to uh, pressures from food and, uh, and transport. Uh, so we expect to see these inflation pressures to persist at least until maybe the the, uh, the, the, the harvest in June for this season and uh, but overall we expect to see uh, inflation averaging at around 7% by the end of this year. Uh, so all that is also linked to the monetary aggregates. You see uh, moderate growth in money supply by 0.7% in the first two months compared to what we had last year, growth of 1.1%. Uh, credit to the private sector, the outstanding credit increasing by 2.2%, again it's 2.4% we had last year. And so far the new authorized loans are showing more positive uh, increase of 16.1% compared to 7.1% we had last year. So as Monetary Policy Committee, all these indications uh, show sort of mixed feelings in the economy. Uh, we see uh, inflationary pressure still uh, there, therefore we have to deal with that. Though it's mainly supply driven, uh, we still have a negative uh, output gap. Uh, so domestic demand is still uh, sort of uh, subdued, and uh, uh, but because of mainly agriculture, we still see inflationary pressures. Uh, so we, 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 we take that into uh, consideration as we uh, uh, agree on a monetary stance. Uh, but then we also see still the monetary aggregates are not growing uh, as fast as we would wish. Uh, therefore. Uh, because of these uh, economic conditions we've just indicated and the outlook we've, uh, uh, we've seen, uh, the Monetary Policy Committee decided to maintain the policy stance uh, for this uh, quarter, uh, for quarter two of uh, this year at 6.25% uh, as we had agreed in December and we expect to see this continuing to uh, to support uh, financing of the of the private sector. So briefly, this is the outcome of the of the two meetings.